Hi everybody, <clears throat> how are you? I am so happy to be back in the Midwest even though I love New York City. So I am back here, things are going back to normal, all my appointment times are back to normal, you can still register, I'm sorry, still um, schedule on my website which is iamemilygear.com. I want to thank you guys, um, all of you new subscribers, all of you existing subscribers, everybody who's been sharing and um, commenting on my videos. Uh, it's really making a difference. I want to tell you, you guys are making the difference because it's getting seen by more and more people every time you do that. And so um, these last few videos have just been seen by a lot more people than any of my previous. So thank you so much. Um, a couple of people have even signed up for... Um, sessions based on seeing the videos. So again, that's due to you guys sharing it and getting it out there. I really appreciate that. Um, I wanted to come on and uh, talk a little bit about um, this this uh, new moon that's happening tonight. It also happens to be the Chinese New Year, which is the year of the pig. Um, and I wanted to get a few cards for you for that. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, how I'm feeling today, and I am very triggered today, and I was last night as well. I don't know if you guys are experiencing this too, but if you are, um, after all these years of going through all the shit that I have, I have developed a few processes for dealing with triggers, and I wanted to share them with you. The first, and um, I guess most obvious one, is to just breathe. Like, take a step back breathe in and I like to take a deep breath in for 10 seconds, deep breath out for 10 seconds. And then I start cutting back the seconds by, by one with each breath until it's like I'm doing nine seconds in, nine seconds out, eight seconds in, and eight seconds out. And by the time I do that, first of all, I've flooded my body with oxygen, which totally chills me out. Second of all, it just makes you get your mind on something else for a for just a few moments so that you can back up and get rational again, okay? Um, so that's number one. Number two is I then start asking myself questions. Uh, I will start saying things like, why well, yes, Emily, I know that you don't like X, Y, Z. Why don't you like that? And then I will answer my own question about why I don't like something. And then I'll respond to that as if I were talking to a friend or a client or somebody else and just remind myself, bring myself back to the present moment. Because I find that if we are feeling really anxious or triggered, we're probably living somewhere in the future. We're either having an argument that hasn't even happened yet. We are anticipating an outcome that we don't desire that hasn't even happened yet. Um, we're worrying about you know something that might not even take place. So it's important to me to bring myself back to the now, to start answering my own questions, and to really focus in on why I'm feeling a certain way. That usually takes care of it for me anymore. When I was still in the phase where I was still really uncovering deep-seated wounding, okay, which is where a lot of our new initiates are. When I say new initiates, I mean people who are just awakening to this whole process. They're just starting this process. Um, that is when you're discovering where your wounding really is. And sometimes you don't know, like you're just figuring it out. And so at that point, when you start asking these questions of yourself, feel where you feel it in your body. Okay. So let's say, I'm trying to remember what was triggering me earlier and I just really can't right now. You get me on, you get me on Blake camera and I'm like, ah, I don't even know what's happening anymore. So I apologize. Um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of something. I can't. Okay. So let's say you're upset because you have, you did not get a, uh, an opportunity that somebody else did. And you're saying to yourself, well, self, I know you don't like to feel like you're missing out on something that other people are getting. But really, you know, opportunities are presented to you at the right time when you're supposed to receive them. And to be honest, you weren't ready for that anyway, because X, Y, or Z. And when I am going through that process, I'll feel where I feel it in my body. And I'm feeling it right now in my solar plexus, right? So what happens in your solar plexus? That's the place 
That's the whole I am area. That's the place where you're, I would say your ego develops and um, you develop a sense of self. You develop some self-esteem there. The other thing that lives there is thing, are things like anger and jealousy, okay? They're related to the organs in your body in that same area, the liver, often is holding anger, the gallbladder, right? When you say you've been galled by someone, the gallbladder is in that area. Um, all of those things can have to do with um, anger, resentment, uh, the need to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. Um, and so when you feel it in that area, so many times when you boil it down, it comes down to fear, okay? And so how do you deal with it when it's in that area? Well, you can reason it out as I just did. Hey, you weren't ready for that opportunity anyway. It's going to come up for you when you're ready for it. You know that's how the universe works. Chill out, right? Or, and this is how you usually have to start the process, to be honest, because not everyone can really see around it from all sides right in the beginning. Just send love to it. Just like feel it in your body and then see yourself as a separate person in front of you and send like send love from your heart to that area. Just feel it go there. All right. I know that sounds really corny. Believe me, I'm one of those people that is just like whenever I think something sounds ridiculous, but it works. And I don't know why it works except for love is one of the highest vibrations there is. And I know because when I work, so I clear a lot of negative energies and entities away from people. And when I come into the picture, those energies scatter, like they are gone. Okay. So it's the same idea. You're sending love, a high vibrational energy into a lower vibrational energy, whether it's rage or resentment or fear or anger and as you send it in there that stuff scatters it just dissipates and the love as it starts to radiate and it starts to become your daily process your daily um way of being it's not going to come up in the same way that it has right you're still going to get triggered but you're going to be able to deal with it in a very healthy and manageable way all right. So um, those are the major points that I wanted to make and make sure that you guys uh, were aware of and were starting to do in your day to day life. Um, a few other things that work I've mentioned recently, a lot of meditation. OK, if you're just starting, you can start for five or ten minutes a day like that's seriously going to help. And it's the same principle as you start bringing in those higher vibrational entity or not ent energies and even entities, you know, you may be working with the angels, with the creator, him or herself, itself. Um, those things, nothing low vibrational wants to be around it. It is really that simple. Um, and uh, so you can start bringing in that white light. Just focus on the white light and bring it into your body. Okay, there's never going to be a downside to doing that. Um, Salt baths. I love salt baths. Okay. So for me, the element of water is very purifying and cleansing. For me, it conducts electricity, energy, whatever you want to call it, uh, really, really well. I'm also a water sign, so it works out really well for me. I also add salt to it because that adds the element of earth into the water. And it's also very clearing of your energy. It helps to ground me, helps to calm my mind, helps me to relax. It's freaking warm bath water. Like who can not relax in that, right? So um, so that helps a lot too. And do it as often as you want. Again, there's no downside to it. Just don't fall asleep in there, okay? Do me that favor. Um, what else do I do? Taking walks, using your energy, getting those endorphins going in your body. You don't have to go out and run a race. You don't have to do like I do and go do martial arts. Just to go take a walk. Take a walk in nature, first of all. That's grounding. You're you're getting the element of air um, from the wind and the, the air outside. Getting the element of earth from being on the ground, moving your physical body in space. Okay? That's super important. And sometimes I like to turn on music that will kind of take me out of my mind. And I'll go ahead and focus on the music. Um, it doesn't have to be relaxing. I don't listen to particularly relaxing music. I love trap music. Like that, you know, I like that. I like all kinds of stuff. But but that takes my mind away. I'll focus on the music and the rhythm and I will walk and it just takes me out of my mind. 
Um, and so I think the more we can practice leaving our mental space uh, at in times of anxiety, like the mental space is not bad. It's important. It, it plays an important role in our day to day lives and being humans on this planet. Right. We have to be functional. We have to use our brains. Uh, please do not not use your brain. All right. <laughs> please do use it. But there are times when we need to escape it because it can become a prison. And that is the world that we live in. So many of us are fighting to escape that mental prison. So these things can really help you to do that on a practical level. Um, there was a time in March when I was taking four hours at a time and losing myself in meditation. And I had to do it at that time because I was going through another one of the dark night of the soul situations, right? I've had so many of those in my lifetime. Um, this is just the way that creation or the creator or my higher self decided to put me through this particular incarnation. And I feel like it's so I could help you guys and share some of this with you, um, at this time. So, um, so, so I'm now not in that place where I need to lose myself for four hours. I'm now in the place where I can rationalize with myself and say, uh, pull it together you do not need to be feeling this way. You know better. And I'm, you know, you want to be loving with yourself. If you're mean to yourself, if you're judgmental of yourself, that's going to make it worse. So, um, so I think a little bit of tough love is a good thing, right? But it has to really be love. Like that is the key. It has to come from a loving place. Uh, otherwise you're going to put yourself into shame and, um, guilt, and those are some of the lowest vibrational energies of all. You do not want shame and guilt. If you are feeling that, you're in the wrong place, okay? And you want to say to yourself, why do I feel so ashamed? Oh, it's because I put unrealistic expectations on myself that no human being could ever live up to, including myself, because I am also a human being and I deserve the love that I give to everyone else. That's the kind of rationalizing I mean. I don't mean rationalizing something to the point where you're doing something harmful and making it seem okay. I mean, take a moment... Use your brain to get yourself out of your mental prison, okay? So that's one thing uh, One thing that I do. All right. I hope that is helpful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull some cards for us, actually, um, for today, being the, um, the new moon in Aquarius. Aquarius being a very mental energy. Um, it's also an energy of freedom, free thought, and um, uh, lack of limitations in the mental sphere. So that is exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about employing that mental energy to bring freedom, not misery, not pain, not jail. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm using the um, Bianco Inero deck today. And we're going to... I'm just going to ask Creator really quickly... Um, for a few cards to guide us to what um, what energies we need to focus on for this new moon that's happening today and tonight. And I'm also clearing the cards right now. Okay. This is for the collective. I'm going to actually, I'm going to go ahead and go with these two first. We've got the 10 of wands with the three of pentacles coming up here. And first of all, I love this because we were just talking about the bur the mental burden, right? And while wands is not mental, wands is more like, you know, energetic. I feel like our mental burdens so heavily affect our energy level. Like it, it may be one of the most important things that affects our physical energy and um, uh, and I say physical only because the Ten of Wands typically shows a human, uh, a person carrying a huge load. And so I feel like our biggest load sometimes is our mental load, okay? And it's important to set that down. And I feel like that is part of um, what we're being asked to do with this new moon coming up. We also get the Three of Pentacles and... Um, I'm just pulling in that the message right now because I get a lot of different messages for this card at different times. Um, and right now, I feel like there is a, 
it's almost like the spiritual community is in need of this collective setting down of this mental energy, okay? And allowing the freedom that the energy of Aquarius brings in, it almost allows you to tap into your true potential, is what I'm hearing. It allows you to tra tap into your true, um, <laughs> they're like your true freakish potential. Like they're literally using the word freakish because uh, it's like, Aquarius are like total freaks, okay? They are like so far out there. Their ruling planet is like nuts. It's like so far out there. Um, and it's kind of like the crazy, the weird side of life, right? It's very weird, but it's also very freeing. And it's also very, um, the energy is light and and upbeat and that's where we need to go with it right now we're we've got all the these heavy burdens right that we've been carrying around for a while it, they're huge burdens if if you're going through the awakening process the dark night of the soul this is your opportunity to put all of that down okay and just um give it up to the universe they're saying just surrender it to the universe um that the oh okay so they're also saying that this is the support of the collective at this time this is the collective of um the spiritual collective support, it's its like it's buoying you up from beneath. So if you are feeling like you're in that dark place, you're being lifted up by the entire collective and you're being urged to lay down this burden at this moment so that um, you can also be more easily lifted up, okay? So you're laying down this burden for yourself. You're also laying it down for the collective because we all need to be lifting up all that shit, let's be honest. <laughs> so I'm kind of kidding about that, but also like if you can't do it for yourself, do it for everybody else in your life, all right? But the main the main lesson of enlightenment, of, um, of awakening is who you are and that you as a self, as an individual are part of the whole and you matter too. And self-love, loving yourself is that ground zero for being able to really expand and become part of the spiritual or become an active part of the spiritual whole. You're already part of the spiritual whole no matter what. Okay. So lay down these mental burdens, burdens of all kind. But I'm getting mental because of um, Aquarius and because of all the info that just came through before. Okay, so let's, um, what else just came out here? The devil, of course, the devil came out. This devil is so fucking weird. This guy is like, ooh, my hand's shaking. I think it's a caffeine. Another thing, yet another thing I refuse to give up. Um, so for so many of you, Okay, so the devil is what's holding you back. This mental burden is what's holding you back. Get out of your own head. Like you are literally limiting yourself more than anything else in your life, okay? These devil energies, these energies that are holding you back become easier once you take yourself out of your own mental prison, okay? Um, we did not get the Eight of Swords, which is typically the mental prison card. But... Um, but it is that burden. That burden creates the prison. And all these cards are related, obviously, but the burden creates the prison that keeps you keeps you changed. So this is also a prison. Oh, that's why, because this I always call this the major arcana version of the Eight of Swords. So we sort of did get that energy here in this card. Um, it continues to be about releasing those karmic situations, whether you are in a uh, divine complement partnership or not. Every one of us is holding on to karma. And we're releasing that over, you know, over and over again at different levels. We might release one situation, but the same energy may be playing out through our job, through our, through our relationship with our parents, through our relationship with ourselves. Okay, The most important relationship is your relationship with yourself. That is where this big block might be, or probably is, you know, because there is no more important relationship, no important blockage to address. Okay. Um, I'm going to get one last card before we end it. I don't want this to go too long. Oops, what flipped over? Of course, the two of swords. Okay. This is that, this is kind of that mental blockage. This is that not moving forward until you release all this stuff. So go ahead, push it. You know, it's, it's, 
this is, they're showing me like, um, it's a balance, but it's kind of a stalemate. It's like this uncomfortable balance, this, this being stuck. Okay. So push it, push it over. It's like, just like knock it down in order to spread it out, pick out the good pieces and build it back up again. Okay. More tarot imagery. That's almost like the tower, but this is the tower of your own mind and of your own making and of your own doing. And therefore your own disassembling, your own reassembling. That is what I feel we're doing it. We're doing right now. We're doing it in um, a way that creates freedom. It creates connection. Um, speaking of Aquarius, it can. Uh, uh, I'm hearing connection. Um, it allows connection where we were blocking it in the past. Whether whether that's like romantic relationships or friendships or a community, they're they're putting a huge emphasis on community right now. So even more than our personal relationships community and connection and seeing our own value in community and our own um, niche in community. What is your niche? What is it? What is your like, <laughs> in what way do you let your freak flag fly is kind of what they just said. Like there is an individuality to you. Um, again, Aquarius that no one else has. Okay. What is that? Allow it to come out. Stop tying it up in your mental space, worried that you're too weird or it won't be accepted or um, it won't be perfect. What did I, I read a meme today that said something like Picasso didn't paint like Picasso while he waited to become Picasso, okay? So it's like the same idea. Be you now. That's the only way you're going to be you is to be you now. And that's what's so important, all right? That's putting down the mental baggage, the bullshit that isn't starving you. Um... It's allowing you to be lifted up by the collective and the collective energies that are happening now. Get on the train. Get on the spaceship. Let's do this, right? So that is your reading for today. I hope you're having a great day. I'm going to try to record something else later. Don't know what it's going to be, but um, we'll see. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, appointments can be scheduled on my website, um, IamEmilyGear.com. And um, thank you so much for subscribing, sharing, liking, all that stuff. Hit like now, please. People will see more of these videos then. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.